There's a lot of misinformation in Thailand about the cost of living. Today we'll give you a complete insight into how much the true cost of living really is. Condos or apartments range from anything from three to five thousand Thai baht. This would be basic accommodation but still livable in. Mid-range condos would be about six thousand to ten thousand Thai baht. Luxury condos and apartments, you know, anything from like fifteen thousand Thai baht going up. Anything beachfront in resorts like Pattaya and Wai Hin, you know, if it's beachfront, is uh, you know, can be an absolute fortune. Same as in central Bangkok. I've stayed in many mid-range condos from six to 10,000 baht and they've all been quite nice living environments. They've all had swimming pools, some kind of gym there, kind of a nice room with usually a bit of a separate kitchen and, you know, an ensuite bathroom as well. If you're looking at getting a Thai style house, you start about 8,000 baht going up to maybe 15, 20,000 for a Thai style house, just a small two, three bedroomed kind of property. So Western style houses would start probably about 20,000 baht up, going right up to, you know, it could be, you know, 100,000 baht if it was in a, in a great location. The electric bill in the condo and apartment. So electric bill are pretty standard there. If you're using the air con, most of the time in the evening, I think most people leave it on all night and sometimes in the daytime. So, you know, standard kind of prices, you know, a thousand baht up, between about a thousand and two thousand baht per month for your electric bill in a condo or apartment. Having a house, then, you know, it's gonna be a little bit more because you've probably got three AC units. In my house here now, I have one, two, three. We have three units in this house here. Uh, so our electricity bill now has just come in the last couple of months. It's been around about two thousand baht but you know, we don't use it that much. We just use it in the evenings. Water bills in condos and apartments are next to nothing, you know, 100 baht. Even in this house here, it's only about 150 to 200 baht. So water bills are very, very cheap in Thailand. For internet in our house, we pay, we've just had it installed in this house here. We pay 500 baht per month. It's from the government, this one is, so it's a little bit cheaper than some other policies. I also have internet on my phone, which is 650 baht per month. You can get it cheap. I mean, the cheapest package I've seen is about 300 baht per month, but I like quite a good package on my phone. I use the internet a lot. For food expenses, it, I mean, it varies immensely. We actually cook a lot now. We've got a home here. We cook a lot in our house. So we buy food from the market and then we, we cook at home. So in the market, you know, we're probably spending about 5,000 baht, but we're, but we're buying food for four people in my family. I've got two kids and a wife and two dogs. So we're buying quite a bit of food and we're cooking here all the time. If you go out to Thai basic restaurant, it's 30 to 50 baht for kind of a dish, you know, kind of a noodle dish or some kind of rice dish with pork or chicken. That's kind of standard price, 30 to 50 baht, just something in between there. Obviously depends on the establishment a little bit. Water's free in all these kind of restaurants. Then if you go out to like a bit of a fancier joint or somewhere a little bit nicer, it's usually about 80 to 100 baht per dish. So we'd go out and, you know, because we're a family of four, we'd buy, you know, four or five different dishes and then eat all together from them dishes. So, you know, it'd be probably 500 baht at least. If you to buy Western food, Western food varies quite a lot. Uh, and the standard varies quite a lot, depending whatever you are in. Uh, usually between about two to 400 baht per dish, depending. You can get some great value deals in some real tourist areas, like, you know, down in Phuket or Pattaya or uh, Wai Hin, you know, there are some really good deals there on Western food, but in most areas it's about two to 400 baht per dish. Beer is usually about 70 to 100 baht as long as you're not in a go-go bar in Pattaya or something, then it's going to be like 150 baht. If you're a wine drinker, wine's quite expensive. You can buy in 7-Eleven now and they do have special stores for wine, but it is quite expensive. If you've got a bit of a wine addiction, then not really the best place in Thailand. It is quite pricey. A decent bottle of whiskey is probably a thousand baht. You can get really crazily cheap whiskey here, you know, Samsung, I think it's called about 350 baht or something from 7-eleven so there is really really cheap thai whiskey but you know i think a lot of westerners want kind of the decent stuff which is more like a thousand baht entertainment for myself is you know very cheap now because i don't really go out that much and that busy with my two kids and family life to be honest with you but you know in the past i have spent a hell of a lot of money on going out and partying so i will warn you if you you know if you really like going out partying it, it does cost money in thailand it ain't cheap i mean now i spend next to nothing going out entertainment to be honest maybe two or three thousand per month 
But if you like to go partying, you know, especially in Bangkok and some real party areas, you know, you, you do need quite a lot of money for that kind of thing. You, you know, most of my friends, when we used to go out, you know, when we used to go out partying, you would at least spend two to 5,000 baht per night. But, but 5,000 baht per night was going out on a bit of a mad one, to be honest with you. It was more like 2,000. Okay, moving on to motorbikes and cars. Motorbikes first. So motorbikes, very, very cheap to run. It's about 150 per tank of gasoline. I've got a Hilux diesel 2.4 and this takes 2,100 baht per tank full and I can do a thousand kilometers on that. My wife has a car, that's like a one liter eco car and to fill that up would cost 1,000 baht and she can do 700 kilometers on a tank full. That will give you some idea about, you know, kind of expenses, diesel and petrol expenses. Uh, they are reasonably cheap but they have gone up the last couple of years to be honest quite a bit for the motorbike there's no kind of insurance there's just come some kind of government insurance so you don't really pay insurance there's only a little one you have to pay uh, for my truck it was 20,000 baht per year that's for full insurance fully insured because it was a brand new truck I bought three years ago so we kind of pay insurance on that on my wife's car now they just have the government insurance there's not really another insurance they have because it's older than sorry not seven years it's a 10 year old car now so uh, they don't really get insurance on a really old car like that in Thailand if you want to rent a motorbike in Thailand you know the standard per day charge is 202 to 300 baht depending where you are uh, usually I've paid about 250 to be honest. If you were to rent the motorbike for a month, it's anywhere between about two to 3,000 baht per month. If you were to rent a car per day, it's usually about 1,000 baht. That's kind of starting price. And then that would be a small kind of eco car, you know, not, not a really big, just something average like a Toyota or something like this. You know, if you want some kind of truck or, you know, Forte Ventura or, you know, one of the bigger models, then it's, you know, it's going to be 1500, probably 1800 per day. If you're hiring a car or, or they've come with full insurance, you know, that 1000 baht would be full package insurance with it. Uh, with the motorbikes, they don't really have insurance. You just have to be careful. As I said, they just have the government insurance that they have on it. With laundry, I mean, now we have a home here. We do all our laundry in a washing machine uh, at home. So, you know, we just buy the powder. But, you know, you guys who are having condos and apartments, usually there's always, a, a, you know, a set of washing machines at the bottom of the condo on the ground floor or underneath somewhere that you can use. You just have to buy the powder and then usually just, you know, hang it up on your balcony. Uh, you can take it to like a laundry place, but most expats, when they live here a long time, they don't do that. That, that's kind of a tourist thing to do to be honest with you because it's quite pricey yeah most people do their own washing themselves and then they put hang it up on the balcony so with regard to visa i'm myself personally on a marriage visa and that cost 1900 baht we didn't use an agent we did it ourselves so it was quite cheap you know it was a bit of hassle with the all the paperwork and things working it out but last year we actually used an agent and it cost 30,000 baht and we thought it was quite expensive to be honest with you. This year we said, oh, we'll do it all ourselves. It was 1900 baht, so it was, uh, you know, pretty cheap to be honest with you. Swimming pools and gyms. Uh, generally, gyms are, are paid anything from 1000 to 2500 baht per month. Uh, the one I used at the moment was 1500 baht per month. And this is a good Western style gym with all the good Western equipment in there and pretty good size. It's not got a swimming pool though, and it's not got sauna or steam. Uh, I paid another one I paid in Bangkok that was nearly 3,000 baht. You know, it was quite expensive, but it was very lush and very, very nice. So, and had lots and lots of more facilities in there. Local swimming pools are everywhere in Thailand. You can find them. They're normally hidden away a little bit sometimes, though. Uh, they're like local pools that all the Thais use. There's one down the road I've been using in Samot Song Kram now where I live and it's 50 baht per go, you know, and you can spend as long as you want in there. It's a 50 meter pool. It's all outside. It's lovely. Uh, absolutely fantastic. You know, 50 baht for adults and it's 30 baht for my kids. So very, very cheap and a really good sized pool there. And they have swimming lessons there as well. There's teachers there if you want to pay for private lessons. Next thing would be, you know, medical insurance, which is super, super important. I think a lot of people skimp on this and it's probably one area you shouldn't skimp on, you know. Uh, 
you should try and get the best policy you can and read all the fine print. I think that's probably the best advice I can give you. You know, you should pay anything from two to 3,000 baht. You know, I've had a mate out here who got caught out by, you know, not having a decent policy. So just be aware of this and just make sure you read all this fine print and make sure you pay a good for a good policy. And, you know, a good policy probably costs towards 3,000 baht per month. Another expense that people don't think about, you know, you're probably gonna at some stage wanna go back to England, go back to America, Canada, or wherever you're from. And you know, prices of flights have significantly gone up in the last 12 months. You know, everyone knows about the fuel prices going up everywhere in Thailand and around the world. So something to consider, you know, it does cost a lot more money to get back to your own country to see family and friends now. Another one would be like, trips you can take out you know this is an expense that i think is great in thailand you know in england i can never do like weekend trips it was so expensive but in thailand you know weekend trips away you know one night away is so cheap you can do this it's a little bit more now i've got a family you know two kids you always have to get a family room but you know before when i was single it was great you could you know literally pay seven eight hundred baht per night and you could go away for the weekend kind of thing and you know everywhere is kind of cheap you know food's cheap so you know these little trips away absolutely fantastic and very good value if you're using meter taxis in you know in a few different areas around thailand you know especially in bangkok they're really great to be honest with you and very very good value you know most you know short journeys in the in the capital you know only take 20 30 minutes you know cost you know 100 150 baht max you know they're very very cheap if that sometimes they're very cheap uh, as long as it's not traffic jams which sometimes happens but the meter slows right down in traffic jams so don't worry if you're in a traffic jam you know i've sometimes had an hour you know spend an hour in a taxi going across the city you know got stuck in traffic quite a bit and it's still only come to like 300 baht you know and i've gone a lot uh, quite a you know i've been in the car for over an hour and you know i've traveled over maybe 30 kilometers right across the city and it still only costs 300 baht so the meter taxes in bangkok are superb other areas around Th thailand i know down in phuket they get a bit of a bad rep some of the taxes down there but a lot of foreigners now use the bolt app and they use private taxis so that's another way you can save a bit of money uh you know i don't really use taxis myself now but i have in the past a lot uh, now i'm using the car all the time or the motorbike you can use tuk-tuks to get around in lots of different areas around Thailand. Cycle rickshaws, which is the, the ones where the, the old guy on the front is cycling you around. You know, motorcycle rickshaws, cycle rickshaws, you know, all kinds of transportation when you go around the whole of Thailand. Fantastic. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're all pretty cheap, to be honest with you. Just watch out for the tuk-tuk. Sometimes they overcharge a little bit, but most of the other ones are pretty sound, to be honest with you. Motorbike taxis are, you know, a really great way to get about the city and about anywhere in Thailand, you know, especially if you're just going a few kilometers. As long as you feel comfortable riding on the back of a motorbike. I mean, for me, it's just pretty natural now. Uh, but, you know, on the back of a motorbike, it's super cheap because it's just you and the driver and the motorbike, which doesn't cost much to run. So the price is a really good value and they're really quick as well. You can get around very, very quickly. They have these song towers in Thailand where there's like two seats that go down either side. You just jump on them as they're driving around and they're all in Thai. It's a bit confusing if you just come here, but when you get to know them, you can jump on these. They're on certain routes. Uh, but it is all in Thai and normally the drivers don't speak any English unless they're in a very tourist area. Uh, and also buses, you know, around, but everything is in Thai again. Unless you're at the big bus stations, then, you know, it isn't. But all your local buses that go around, they're so cheap. Some of them are free. You can get on. It's ridiculous. And many time I got on that bus and I was like, I went to pay and there was like, no, it's free. <laughs> Someone would say like, and I was like, okay, I don't know why it's free. It was like certain days it was free. I was like, okay, cool. Welcome to Thailand.